Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Many of us are familiar with exploitation films. The movies that take an often controversial subject and, what else, exploit the hell out of it. Now, a good chunk of the time, the makers of these movies know they're making over-the-top tripe, like jail exploitation films, black exploitation films, sex exploitation films, gore exploitation films. I don't make major motion pictures, I make crap. But the hardest thing to watch are the exploitation films that don't know that they're being silly, they think that they're making art. This is where the cell comes in. Directed by Tarson, no, really, that's why he calls himself Tarson. He is too intense for last names. This is one of those movies that tries to tell you it's shocking, poetic, and deep, when it really just takes elements from other movies that are shocking, poetic, and deep, and forgets to give it a story and characters that are actually shocking, poetic, and deep. The result is a visually interesting but pretentiously annoying dick fuckfest that thinks it's saying more than it really is. So let's dive into Tarsum's soul. This is The Cell. So we start off with Lopez of Arabia wearing an outfit that looks like a melted version of Bjork's swan dress. I thought we were going sailing today. Come on. Come on, Mr. E. It's broken. Who says? Moki Lok? Now, Edward, we agreed. No more Maki Lok. Moki Lok is the boogeyman. Edward. Oh no, we got consumed by those stupid scary face videos from YouTube. So it turns out this was all just a simulation to go into the mind of a boy in a coma. Sing a song of sixpence. A pocket full of rye. Um, I'm guessing that's code for why the fuck are we wearing Twizzler catsuits? Four and twenty blackbirds. Big fill up pie. Yeah, this nursery rhyme thing is one of the many pointless tidbits that really have no purpose. Like, why do they need a code to know if she's okay? Couldn't they just ask, hey, you okay? Mr. E is doing fine. Oh yeah, and they don't call the boy Edward either. For whatever reason, they call him Mr. E. Get it? Because his mind is a mystery? This movie's pushing the envelope! He loves it when you visit. My husband wonders if that's true. He wants to place Edward in a hospital. <sighs> Mr. Baines, I've been working on this project for seven years. I don't care if they've rebooted the Spider-Man movies, I should be the lizard! Please don't take offense, Dr. Kent. Your work's invaluable to this company. But you're not sure about me. We've waited uh, 18 months for signs of progress. 18 months? Good God, I pull out too! Give them five more and maybe they work their way up to Hey Diddle Diddle! We then cut to our psychopath for the evening, Carl, played by Vincent D'Onofrio. As we see, he spends most of his hobby time partaking in... You know, I'm just gonna make this a little easier for you folks. Whenever Tarsum wants you to be disturbed, I'm just gonna push the be disturbed button. Are you ready? Let's try it. One, two, three. Be disturbed. Ah! Nicely done. So while Lopez is feeling bummed about not being able to work with Edward, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. E, she does what any in-control, non-dependent social worker would do, get stoned off her ass. Now we're just looking for excuses to put her in pretty dresses. Edward? Edward, is that you? Uh, pointless! Uh, oh, thank God. That scene will add a lot to the movie. We cut back again to Carl's hobby, which seems to be very... um... specific. You know, I'm starting to think this is one of those really highly funded personal porno movies that somehow fooled executives into thinking it was telling a poetic story. You know, like The Passion, or The Room. It's not really going in depth into anything, it's just giving the director a chance to live out his sick, weird fantasies. Just like my highly funded personal porno film, Clown Cats with Six Breasts from Outer Space. WHEN WILL I FIND THE OTHER PERSON WHO LIKES THIS?! Though to be fair, I think those movies probably had much more convincing long hair extensions than Carl's baby doll boutique wig. So we cut to where Carl drops off the body and the police look over the crime scene. Is the water always 
this slow? Yeah, this time of year. Give me a coroner's report right away. Ah, uh, yes. And we also have Vince Vaughn as the classic obsessed cop. How do I know he's an obsessed cop? Well, he sleeps and brushes his teeth in his office. He whispers his understanding of the criminal mind he's hunting. He'd love an animal like that. You're the bad man, aren't you, Carl? Not clear enough to be a statement, but just loud enough so that people can turn and say, Oh, wow, he's tortured. And the number one reason I know he's an obsessed cop is... He never closes his fucking mouth! Oh, I don't mean he talks all the time. No, no, I mean literally Vince Vaughn thinks the best way to look intense is to just leave your lip hanging open the whole time. I swear, all I want to do throughout this entire movie is go... But hey, he has to look intense when he's understanding a mind this sick. For after months and months of obsessing over this killer, he's finally come to an earth-shattering conclusion that will blow your mind. There's one thing I know for certain. If we can't stop him, he ain't gonna stop himself. Brilliant! Wait, what? If we can't stop him, he ain't gonna stop himself. Really? That's the big conclusion you've come to? I mean, he's already killed several women. I think it sort of goes without saying he's gonna keep doing what he's doing. I dare even say, painfully obvious. What's the next conclusion he's gonna come to after all this time? All right, people, after months and months of research, we have come to the conclusion that our suspect does officially have hands. Put a search off everybody at hands! Move it, move it, move it! My God. What if I'm the... But it turns out Carl does strike again and kidnaps a woman from a conveniently empty parking garage. He puts her in a location far away from his house, but thankfully the police figure out where he lives. However, he suffers a convenient plot attack and finds himself in a coma. But the investigators continue to search the place to see if they can find any clues to the woman's location. Be disturbed. Ah! But the doctor fills us in on what's wrong with him. Have you ever heard of Whalen's infraction? It's a form of schizophrenia that infects the neurological system in utero. It lays dormant until it's triggered by some kind of trauma. He's not just catatonic. He's disappeared. Uh, are we talking about the killer or Vince Vaughn right now? Because to be honest, I believe either one. Now, whatever state that he happens to be in, there is a girl that is missing. If there were anything, anything, so after he does the earnest eyes thing, he leads them to the lab where the dream machine is located. They recommend that they go inside his mind to figure out the location of the kidnapped woman before she most likely drowns in this death contraption. Now, seeing how Carl liked to take beautiful women and turn them into lifeless dolls, it only makes sense that they send in the most beautiful woman they can find, I dare even say doll-like, to go in there and face the danger. I'm sure she won't be at any risk at all. Are you sure? I'm sure. Thank God they just happened to have a Twizzler suit his size on standby as they hook her up to the machine and let her dive in. <sighs> really? You're throwing in a cloth with Jesus' face on it? Yeah, I can just see Tarsum dancing in the background shouting, Ask me what it means! Ask me what it means! <laughs> She comes across a little boy version of Carl and- Ask me what that means! Ask me what that means! Yeah, I know what it means, thanks. And he leads her to a horse in a laboratory. <laughs> Be disturbed. Ah. Oh, come on, I didn't believe that one. Ah. Don't make me force you to write essays interpreting the director's work. Ah. That's better. <laughs> it's no more disturbing than how they make chicken McNuggets. His victims. So she continues throughout his mind as we see even more disturbing imagery. Right 
and now Marilyn Manson fans all over the world are saying, I get this. This really speaks to me. I know I'm supposed to be creeped out by all this, but this imagery has already been put in a million music videos by this point. They kind of lost their shock value even when this film came out. If anything, it looks more like a tour through Pee Wee's S&M dungeon. Ah! and pull yourself up a chair. It's human flesh. See women getting tortured to produce a cheap skin. Someone wants attention. We're giving you fair warning. It's pretentiously foreign and preachy at Pee Wee's dungeon. Ah! But she finally comes across the center of Nutty Town and decides it's too much for her to take and exits the machine. Where you come from? That's right, smoke. Smoke, you're obsessed. That's what obsessed people do, they smoke. If you were any more obsessed, you'd be eating those cigarettes. Ugh! She's had quite a journey. That could be dangerous. What are you talking about? Well, if she came to believe that Starger's world is real, then theoretically her mind could convince her body that anything that was done to it there was Good actually boy. done. It's like the old wives' tale. Right. You die in your dream, you die in your life. Sort of like if a movie doesn't work on paper, it won't work even if you throw Jennifer Lopez in licorice tights. Dr. Ken, can I come in there and speak no. with you? Let her wake up. We don't have a lot of time. Do you understand that? So Vaughn tries to talk with her to see if she can make any more progress. You don't like what you do? Used to be an attorney. What happened? I had a case. Uh, where this little girl was molested. God, will you close that damn lip? You're driving me nuts! Margaret Sims. Drives me crazy. Big the guy just tried to catch him. Till now. Yeah. Speaking of driving someone crazy, wasn't there a woman we were supposed to save? I mean, what the hell happened to- We don't have much time! They seem to be taking a lot of their time right now. Should we just cut to slowly sinking woman cam every time they say something that doesn't sound important? Whatever happened to Charles Gish? Old Charlie beat the murder rap because, uh, he was insane when he killed Margaret. Hey, where the hell you been? I've been right here. Well, next time tell me, okay? I didn't want to disturb you. You look so cute. You know, you all sleep when you get that look on you. <laughs> decides to head back in, only things don't go exactly as planned. It's a power problem. I, I need you to check the circuit breaker. Six through twelve. I'm already in. Ah oh, yes, because as we all know, the killer, still deep in a coma, knows exactly what the room looks like and how to replicate it in his mind. Pretty good memory for something he's never ever seen before. Quick, begin trailer fuel! So she goes into a flashback where she sees Carl as a little boy being abused by his father. Hey, hey. Let's break the wall, how about that? You little fucking liar! You dog, little faggot! But things get even tougher when we flash back to even more traumatizing moments in his life. Like that horrible experience when he joined the army. All right, but, uh, you had best square your ass away. You will not laugh. You will not cry. Do you mean to tell me that you cannot do one single blow-up? Were you born a fat, slimy, scumbag, new piece of shit? Did you break that plate? I broke the plate. Did you break that plate? You're not his mother! She left us, Carl. Remember that. See that? See that? It's true that child-beating scenes are really intense and pretty hardcore. But it dares to bring light to a concept that we never would have thought about before. Child abuse is bad. Yeah, that's about the gist of it. Child abuse is bad. Because if you thought child abuse was good before, well, this probably won't change your mind because you're already a psycho. But thank God it's showing the people who already know that child abuse is bad that child abuse is bad. Yeah, that really justifies this sad imagery. 
But I guess it's good to show that child abuse always leads to psychotic killers. Well, okay, that's not true. But it does show the uh, uh, transition of Carl's psychological... What the hell do we know about Carl anyway? I mean, there's a scene where she's talking to him by a bathtub, and I just realized, we have no idea who this guy is. We don't know if this is the real him, the dark him, the innocent him. We were never given time to figure out what Carl was like in the real world. I mean, we know what he did, but we never figured out his personality. We never saw him interact with people. We don't know if he's patient, charming, awkward, funny, boring, anything. We actually know very little about him. So how is this character study supposed to tell us anything? Just that he was beaten as a kid and he kills people. I'm sorry, that doesn't make us understand him. It's like the story of Hamlet. If you were to tell us he was a young guy who wanted revenge and his childhood was fine, what would that tell you? Nothing. You need to connect socially with him. That's how you make us feel sorry for him. That's how you make all this exploitive bullshit actually add up to something. You see what the final result is. But instead we get evil monsters to battle. Ooh, ah! But you know what? That shit doesn't matter if we didn't see how it affected him in reality. There's no connection or understanding in this at all. But fuck it, let me guess. We have even more evil Carls to confront, right? What's going on? That hypothetical situation I told yeah. you about? It's happening. What a coinky dink. His mind is unfamiliar territory and she's lost. She thinks this is real. Henry. No. No. No what? I need you here. To do what? All you guys do is point at the screen and shout exposition. Anybody can do that! And once again, how come nobody else ever knows how to operate this brand new dangerous equipment except for two fucking people? Don't you think there should be more precaution for something that they're constantly saying puts people at risk? I got bugs crawling all over my body. It gets worse. So Vince Vaughn decides to go in because, again, nobody else has ever gone in outside of Lopez. And he enters into the lame tricks. Someone interpret me! Actually, I think I recognize that reaction. It's the faces of the people who funded this movie right after they saw what their money went into. Okay. So he does find Lopez pretty quickly, wearing... Um... Did I miss something? When did we get to Disneyland? So Vaughn tries to snap Lopez back to her senses. But not after getting a little Jenny booty while he's in town. Yeah, where's that slowly sinking woman cam again? <laughs> but bad Carl number five drops in and straps him down to a torture machine. Naughty worm. <laughs> Be disturbed. Ah! Now turned on. Ooh. Now confused. Ah. Now disturbed again. Ah! I would not you. But Vaughn tries to snap Lopez out of it by reminding her of her past. Your baby brother had a car accident. He was in a coma for six months before he died. And I'm sorry for saying that! Yeah, forget D'Onofrio, that's the scariest face in the movie. You know, her mind must be a real blank slate. It took almost nothing to win her over to Carl's side, and it took almost nothing to win her back. Tell her she's a peanut, she'll probably believe it. <laughs> So Vaughn is released, and he comes across the clue he's been looking for. Sort of. What are you doing? He gets out of the machine and starts making some calls. Now, what am I doing down here? That machine that he uses, there's a hoist, 
And I want you to look for a um, plaque or uh, a metal plate with some sort of logo on it. Carver Industrial Equipment. I want you to find out every goddamn thing that you can about that machine. Who used it, who sold it, who bought it. Wait, shouldn't he have done that anyway? I mean, we saw clearly that he saw the symbol before. What did seeing it in Carl's head prove? Was it just a reminder he should be doing his job? Catherine, open this door. But it turns out Lopez isn't done yet. She wants to go back into the machine and bring Carl into her mind. She locks everybody out and does the experiment on her own. Funny, I didn't know she could do it on her own. I thought those two people were really necessary, but apparently not. She can go in very easily without anyone else. Whatever. Time to go back to lameception. Wow. I don't know how they did it, but somehow they worked in the Virgin Lopez. This is an odd, odd day. Ask me what it means! Ask me what it means! Okay, that's it! I am so deep and deserve to be talked about! Haha, <laughs> 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 you cannot kill what was never truly thinking! So you might be thinking this is looking like the world's most hallucinogenic Christmas card. You don't? Well, Tarson will fix that. What if they actually add a Christmas border around the frame? I'm not even kidding, they put a Christmas border around the frame. What is up with these choices? Do they even care what they're filming anymore? Merry Christmas from Tarsum. I got Jennifer Lopez to dress as the Virgin Mary. What did you do this year? Ho, 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 ho. So while Vaughn thinks he has a lead on where the woman's being held, it looks like we're finally going to confront all the psychological issues by diving into Carl's psyche coming to grips with the fact that his past does not determine who he is- Or she just fights him like a kung fu movie and rips his nipples off. Thank you, that, that makes me understand him so much more! So Vaughn does reach the woman in time, but Lopez sees that by killing the big bad Carl, she's also killing the little innocent Carl. I don't know how it works either, but the credits are around the corner. Don't complain. Big God boy. So she decides the only sensible thing to do is to put him out of his misery. Alright, so you breached security, defied your superiors, and you just killed somebody who was in police custody. Uh, I believe we're looking at 10 to life for that. Good luck in Lady Prison! I'm sure they make plenty of exploitation films there, so you should be right at home. Oh, I'm sorry, we're operating by the movie's logic. Uh, I'm sure you had a good reason for murdering him! We're just gonna let you off the hook. No charges pressed! Any other bullshit developments you want to throw our way? Ramsey told me you were thinking of, uh... Reversal. With the, uh, kid that you were working with? Yeah, Edward. Edward. Oh, really? So the father of Edward found out that she killed a man through the device, and that suddenly gave him the confidence to entrust his boy to her again? Not worried about okay. What about you? How are you? According to the FBI, um, you guys put me on some drug-fueled mind bender, which then uh, triggered a memory I already had, and officially we found Julia Hickson through good old-fashioned detective work. Actually, that is exactly what happened. Nothing you said there was incorrect. Thanks for everything, Ken. I think we've both figured out today that we're not very good at what we do. So Lopez is back in Edward's mind. They finally go sailing. The ad for her perfume pops up because it obviously looks like a commercial. And the film finally ends. Ooh, I don't like this one. If you're gonna do really hardcore risque stuff, you better do it right. And have a good reason for it. I never got that from this flick. Rather than really trying to understand somebody's mind or their psychology, it seems like they just wanted to fool us with crazy visuals that the film is saying more than it really is. Now, with that said, the visuals can be rather impressive at times. And the idea of going into a serial killer's mind, I have to admit, is pretty cool. But it has to be done in this case with more thought and less instinct. At least someone like David Lynch or Ingmar Bergman, who make very confusing films, at least give us a pure dissent. It is 100% psychological and emotional interpretation. This film either has too much story or too much artiness that it never balances out. And it just becomes obnoxious, pretentious, and annoying. 
I mean, wouldn't it be more interesting if we could really dive into a killer's mind and analyze it? Carl? No, Critic. You've seen my mind. I've bared my soul. Oh, come on, Carl. Just throwing some weird, crazy visuals at us doesn't count as a character study. Well, if you didn't get what I was trying to say with my symbolismness, I'm not going to explain it. Good. Oh, good, I'll explain it. The little boy me is the innocence that's left. Yeah, I know. And the me that sounds like the bug from Men in Black, that's the bad me. I know, that's obvious, but guess what? The human brain isn't that simple. Kittens! What was that? It's too deep, you wouldn't get it. Anyway, the human mind isn't that simple. Hell, life isn't that simple. It's much more complicated. That's why we make movies about it. Well, there's one other reason we make movies about it. What's that? So we can make money while looking artsy! That's a lie! <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I'm the nostalgia critic. I remember it, so you don't have it. What civilization would like some cloning? If we can't stop him, he ain't gonna stop himself.